Hey everyone, this is Wingspan TT, and if you're watching, you know what time it is. It's time for A C R Annoying Creative Response. And I'm taking artistic direction. I'm taking some license here. I don't care how much you hate the ending to this video or any other ending, because whatever I say is artistic, whatever I say is creative, that's the way it goes. So we're just gonna jump in here with the players from I believe bracket B with another extra fun exhibition match, death match on Castel Gandalfo. We got Apocalypto, we got, um, what is this, like that Mel Gibson movie? Um, right off the bat, I screwed up. I was right next to my target. Didn't realize the cool killer there was the one that I had to kill, but um, this is a common mistake to make when playing Deathmatch to not realize you're spawning right next to the person before you have the portraits, before you know if you have line of sight or not. Just walking real calm, don't want her to know. She used the disguise. She doesn't need to know that I know who she is, but uh, maybe she thinks she's gonna get one off of me, but no. Cool killer, the only thing you're getting off on me is your blood on my dress. Unfortunately, the blood doesn't stain, but I guess I could give you away as a player persona. If, if your blood's got a, if your st clothes eventually got stained with blood as you kill people, here, just trailing this person, not my killer, not my uh, pursuer. We have the propaganda somewhere coming up back here, the propaganda. I always like that name. I like to feel like not just any propaganda, this is like a specific propaganda. Propaganda thinks his pursuer is on him, but no, you're walking right into it. Bear! Right between the ribs. We're, cook we're cooking up pro pop yeah, propaganda ribs tonight. All right, some people like baby back ribs, pork ribs, propaganda ribs. That's my special. Um, there was this kid who used to come over to my house a lot when I was a kid, and uh, my grandma used to cook ribs. I always thought they were pretty gross, actually. I always thought her ribs were really gross, but he always used to say, like, oh, I love your grandma's ribs. Grandma, you should open your own rib store. Uh, grandma's ribs. And we always used to laugh and be like, no, of course you shouldn't, grandma. You should stay here and cook your ribs just for us. And while I'm distracted thinking about my grandmother's ribs, the propaganda decides he's going to take my life. He's a liar. Um, but I see uh, there's really no way to lie about it. It's like, hey, I'm your pursuer. Nice to meet you. Um, I guess this is really the only time we're ever going to meet because I am now going to end your heartbeat. Propaganda, once again my target up here. Now I was under the impression that it was possible that the, uh, this guy right, this guy right here, he is my pursuer. He's trying to tell me, he's trying to act all like, oh no, I'm not your pursuer. I just don't believe it. See, he's edging the corner. I know it's him. So I'm going to charge him. He runs away from the charge, but it turns out I have another pursuer. I go in for the double stun. Of course, it's not going to happen. I was actually slamming the smoke bomb button there. But Apocalyptica 916 happens to kill me. Now, whenever I see a number at the end of someone's name like this, 916, I wonder, is it like a, a, some Bible quote? Is there like so, the book of Apocalyptica 916? Um, it would be like the, the most metal book in the Bible. Is, there, um, is it like the person's birthday? Were they born in like September 16th? Um, I don't know, 916. So uh, if, if you know, if, if Apocalyptica 916, if you're watching this, you want to tell me what's going on. Now I see that Mr. Cool is coming over here. I clearly see my pursuer. I'm trying to lure him out into the open. I'm trying to make him waste his time. I'm in first. I don't need to get all the points. I want to make him waste his time, possibly waste his abilities. I'm just going to run over here, and somehow I'm able to stun him. I believe he was actually in... Oh, uh, yeah, there's your taunt, buddy. I believe... Um, Mr. Cool there was actually in the middle of getting ready to throw the smoke bomb, so while he's charging up, I was able to stun him. I come up just the right time to meet Mr. Metal Bible. And then Jesus said, be righteous to one another. And he threw his smoke bomb and punched him in the face. So he punched me in the face. I turned the other cheek. Um, well, he punched me in the cheek, and then I just put my other cheeks out there. Um, so I have learned from the book of Apocalyptica. I, I have been a good Christian, so I hope he understands that um, his lessons were not in vain. Coming up here, Sheet log ro Logarithm 3 is my pursuer. I thought that person was also my pursuer. I'm sorry, Logarithm is my target. We see now this. Uh, no, you have not learned anything, Cool Killer 350. Uh, you've learned that my knees are a lot harder than they look. This guy clearly my pursuer. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna get you in the corner, buddy. Nope, okay, he's not my pursuer. This guy clearly my pursuer. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get. I got. Bow! Oh! God damn it. They just don't make hanging tapestries like they used to, you know? Like, a, like nowadays, if you try to just grab someone around the neck and murder them through tapestry, it'd be kind of hard. The things are heavy, they weigh a couple hundred pounds. Look at that. You got the big Templar symbol on it. Um. But, you know, they're just so soft now. Well, look at that. You can't even ruffle them. You just walk right through them and they ruffle. Again, propaganda is my target. I'm not going to walk right towards them. I don't want him to think that I'm his killer. 
He was obviously suspicious getting a contested kill by remain in first place. I believe I've been in first place pretty much the entire match. Now 5 minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. I'm going to move towards the little safety corner over here. Blends into the group, take the south position. So things are all even, Steven. Here comes my pursuer. Nope, we saw that. I saw you do that, and now I'm going to smoke you. Doom! You know, that knee thing in the face, that's just so great. I always wanted to do that in a real fight, in real life. I always wanted to knee someone in the face. I just feel like that would just be the coolest move you could possibly do to someone. Oh, shit. And I messed up my aim. Unfortunately, I've never... Well, I guess fortunately. Everyone, I have never been in a fight in real life. I've never been in a real fight. Uh, you know, I've been picked on at times. People have threatened to fight me. But it's never actually come to that. When I was in, I believe, 6th, no, probably 8th grade, there's this one kid who decided he was going to chase me. Whenever, whenever we saw each other in the neighborhood on bikes, he would chase me around. He would call me a faggot. He would, like, threaten to beat me up and threaten to steal my bike, all this stuff. And um, I was always able to outrun him because I was always pretty fast on my bike. So I just ran away. I didn't think I could actually beat him up. And then one day, finally, you know, I, I had very bad allergies as a child, and thanks to the miracle of Flonase and um, Allegro, which is Fexafenadrine, for anyone looking for the generic, if you'd like to pick up some Fexafenadrine, now my allergies are better. But anyway, going back to the story, at the time, my allergies were terrible. Like, I would just get terrible wheezing and coughing, horrible post-nasal drip. Whenever it was spring, I was just falling apart. So one spring day, I was leisurely biking around, um, and this guy, this bully, he sees me on his bike, he chases me, he's chasing me, we're biking across the whole town, and I'm just getting winded, I'm getting so tired, and I just cannot run from him, I just realize there's no way I'm going to beat this guy, but finally, I just get off my bike, and I just kind of like, hope, I just hope that he'll leave me alone, but he gets off his bike, because he'll be like, oh, what's wrong, you sick faggot, oh, you're tired? Hi, huh, huh, you little pansy. Oh, oh, you're coughing, and I'm coughing and wheezing. I'm just saying, please, please leave me alone. I'm, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm just coughing. I'm coughing. He's like, what's wrong? And he punches me once in the stomach. Now, it wasn't hard enough to hurt it that much. It wasn't hard enough to break anything. But it was hard enough to cause me to violently vomit all over his legs. So I basically puked all over the kid. Just on the spot, I'd blah all over his legs. Um, and you know what? He actually, he started crying. He called me a faggot again, and then he, he just ran away. I mean, I, I puked all over his jeans, over his nice Reeboks. It was, it was hilarious. I mean, at the time, I really thought he was just gonna, like, punch me in the face for puking on him. But, uh, I guess being covered in puke, huge deterrent from wanting to beat someone up. So, guys, if you're ever in a fight, and you can't knee someone in the face, you know, you don't think you're gonna win, I guess the pro move to do, the top-tier tactic, is just puke all over the Reeboks. Um, so there you go. That's 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 a true life story right there. As little exaggeration as possible. Now I see Cool Killer somewhere coming to view. Here we go. Oh, Cool Killer. Goodbye. I'm the Cool Killer now. Um, but my life is taken here. Boom! With the propaganda coming from behind. I love that animation. In general, though, I would advise you, both in real life and on the internet, and just in general, in your workplace, don't get in fights. There's no real reason to get in fights. My father you always used to have a saying. He says... Um, if it's not going to end in bloodshed, it's not worth getting in a fight over. And I guess that always stuck with me. I don't, I don't know if it's totally true, but I guess his point was, unless it's something where, you know, you basically need to defend yourself, or it's a matter of life and death, or it's a matter of, like, protecting someone extremely serious last minute situation, like, are you really going to start some shit over something? You're going to throw down, you're going to just, like, start, like, some complaints, or try to, like, get all, you know, you're going to start some workplace bullshit with someone over something that just doesn't matter at all. So basically, if it doesn't matter enough that someone's going to end up in the hospital, then it's not worth starting a fight over. So that's just a little life lesson from um, Mr. TT, from my father. Sheet logarithm 3, taking my life with a minute and 16 left on the clock. I am still in the lead. Pretty long cooldown still on both abilities. So just taking things slow. I have three pursuers. No reason to rush into things. Here's a little thing I like to call the dubstep do. Step up up in the thing and just dub him. I dub you the king of losing. All right. I have no clue why that worked. I don't know if it's a glitch. If things looked like that on his screen, there's absolutely no reason that should have worked. Either he was completely unprepared or, um, or I don't know. There's some secret thing where if you just hop up on a, a bookshelf for one second and then stun someone, then they always get stunned. Here, 
My double score goes into effect, so I take my other build with poison. Uh, I have a separate build that has poison that I use when double score goes into effect, so I can get even more points off a double score. But there's only 30 seconds left on the clock, so unless I can drop a poison, hopefully focus poison with the smoke in the next 30 seconds, it's not going to come up to anything. Cool killer coming up here. I have no clue who my pursuer is. Oh my god! Where was she hiding? Cheat logarithm just hiding behind the column back there. And the countdown going off with 9 seconds. Root Onion in 2nd place with 3650. The Propaganda in 3rd place with 3500. And me, Wingspan TT in 1st place. Bam! Dropping the smoke bomb. It's the end of the match. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wingspan TT of TopTierTactics.com. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you enjoyed my story of childhood bullying. And I hope you come by for TopTierTactics.com to see what I'm writing, to see what I'm saying, to see what's going on. And a small announcement, I'd like everyone to know that I have officially begun a monthly comment contest on TopTierTactics.com. Every month, I'm going to be giving away free games to the people who have the funniest and most insightful comments on the blog. You can comment on any article, you can you know, respond to someone's comment, you can post your own comment, but I just want to know, if you come to TopTierTactics.com and comment on any article, you have a chance to win free games, and I'm trying to get other free prizes, including 3D glasses, including gaming wear. Um, I'm working with some companies to try to get, make that possible. So if you want free shit, come to TopTierTactics.com, find an article you like, find an article you hate, and post a comment. If it's really funny, really insightful, you have a chance to win. Everyone on Wingspan TT, and I will see you next time.